So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to listen to um, a little bit of the heated confrontation or heated argument going on between Antonio Tarver and Steve Cunningham on a media call that happened about a couple of weeks ago. This weekend, right now it's um, August the 10th, 2015. I'm Tea Street Controversy. This is Tea Street Controversy Live. Um, we're going to be having Antonio Tarver, 46 years old, by the way, taking on, listen to this. You know what I'm saying? Have you made over $500,000 in the last three years? I haven't. I don't have a business. Get one. And beating you is going to get me that. You understand? So don't try to compare nothing that you've been through that, that will not stand up to a damn thing Steve Cunningham has been through. Because that's what you're going to get. You're going to get that. 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 You're going to get listen to it um i'll put the link right in the top of the description box to listen to the full confrontation but basically that was a um um just a piece of the um, antonio tarver versus um steve cunningham media call from a couple of weeks ago of course if you don't know i'm t street controversy this is t street controversy live and i cover every single major fight live on october on um september the 14th 2015 no august the 14th excuse me 2015, we're going to see um, Antonio Tara versus Steve Cunningham, PBC on Spike TV. I actually got a chance this morning to check out PBC on Spike TV's um, Lights Out. It's, it's, it's basically corner to corner. If you don't know what corner to corner is, it's a version, you know, an alternative to HBO 24-7 and All Access. So it's about 20 minutes or so long. I'm going to put the link to that also in the description box. It is also available on um, the like page. Links to all my social media are right below. Now listen, I'm from Philly, but I'm a huge Antonio Tarver fan to where if you watched me a few years ago when, you know, I was partying, drinking, and, you know, doing whatever, but I was still covering fights, um, I was really deeply hurt and upset when Antonio Tarver failed that drug test because I've always been a fan. Now looking at him at 46 years old and fighting in it, like at heavyweight, a lot of people don't want to give the credit, but he's actually pretty good at heavyweight, and his power has carried up. What he did to Jonathan Banks was no joke. Steve Cunningham, on the other hand, is a natural cruiserweight fighting at heavyweight, and this is the perfect fight stylistically and um, 
how can I put it, weight-wise for both of these guys at this point in time in their career. You got a you, you got a heavyweight who is a small heavyweight, considered to be a small heavyweight, and you got an Antonio Tarver who made his bones at light heavyweight, now fighting at heavyweight at about 220 pounds or so. It's going to be interesting to see what he comes into the ring as. But here's where things get interesting. The winner of this is going to earn a shot or likely earn a shot against the winner of Deontay Wilder versus who and then Deontay Wilder versus Povetkin. So sometime in 2016, we can see um, Steve Cunningham or Antonio Tarver against Deontay Wilder or Alexander Povetkin. Hell, maybe even a Klitschko. I don't think a Klitschko or a, I don't think a Klitschko because Klitschko has to get past Fury and also Klitschko or Fury is going to have mandatories they're going to have to fulfill. For example, the winner of um, Klitschko versus Fury, if I'm correct, is going to have to fight for that WBA. They're going to fight the WBA mandatory, even though the WBA in certain situations don't grant mandatories. Long story, totally different video. But this is one of those fights where I'm actually excited for it because the storyline behind the two older fighters... You know, and Antonio Tarver, who's trying to capture a title, he fought at Cruiserweight for a little while. Remember that fight with Latif Coyote, you know, and um, he failed the drug test. And now fighting at heavyweight, he's this is his last chance. So if he was to lose to Steve Cunningham, then Antonio Tarver just needs to stay on Spike TV and just stay commentating because, in my opinion, he's done. Steve Cunningham, on the, on the other hand, Recently signed with Val Heyman, very good overall, you know, boxer. You know, he has been down multiple times in his career, but there's something about him, especially with the story with his daughter, you know, his passion keeps him going. For example, his fight with Amir Mansour, in my opinion, was one of the fights, if not the fight of the year. Well, we had Lucas Matisse versus John Molina. But what I'm saying is this, you have a crossroads for both fighters. And I've been doing like a little survey, you know, between the boxing community and fans. And a lot of fans aren't really interested in this fight. And I'm asking myself, well, why? Because if one of these fighters lose, I mean, let's be perfectly honest with you. They're done. Or, you know, they're going to be resorted to being a journeyman. I don't see Antonio Tarver losing this fight and just going on a journeyman st status. To whereas in, I can see Steve Cunningham going on that route. And also Steve Cunningham, as he said, you know, never made $500,000 in his career. This fight actually right here was probably his biggest payday. And I actually had a chance to talk to him at the, um, him and Danny Garcia hosted a media day before Danny Garcia fought Paulie Malignaggi. I had a chance to talk to him. The, um, the, um, the video content is here on the channel. And basically he was alluding to or hinting at being with main events was the, promo the worst promotional company he's ever been with. And he said he was with them for like eight years or so. So that goes to say a lot, and that goes to say, well, you know, he had to go through all that, you know, with his daughter, and I'm sure the bills, you know, was crazy, and now he's getting a chance to be with Al Heyman and make some money in a fight that he can possibly win. But the thing is, you know, Antonio Torres' power has carried up, and that's what I'm, you know, that that's the scary part, you know, where Antonio Torres is actually still pretty good, and Antonio Torres, for, for him being 46, even when he fought Roy Jones, people didn't think he was as old as he was back then. You know, he still looks pretty good for his age. Even though, you know, he's older, he's, you know, flabby. But in his heavyweight body, he still carries himself well in the ring. Despite how you look at him, you know, he's not slow. He's not, um, he's not a guy that's going to be in there doing a whole bunch of clenching. You know, yeah, his pace may have slowed down a little bit. But overall, from what I've seen, he's an exciting fighter. So, of course, I'm going to be here this weekend after Friday's um, fight. Giving a live post-fight results video. And um, we're going to try to get you some more content from Fight Week this week. And this is Tea Street Controversy. Tea Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.